Hi Flashes, today we are going to be talking about one step and two step equations. And it is very, 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 write these notes just like I do. There is no, just like I do, there is no other way to solve equations besides showing the proper algebraic steps. So I'm going to teach you guys how to show the proper algebraic steps so that you guys can make sure that you are going to get full credit um, on any quiz or test that we take that deals with equations, okay? So when you solve, so when you solve equations, your goal is to get the variable on one side and every other number on the other side so that when you are done you have like x equals 10 or w equals negative 50 okay so to do this so let's talk about one step equations first we are doing inverse operations so to move something to the other side of your equal sign you have to do the opposite of whatever operation it is doing so for example we have our variable m, which means if we want to get the variable by itself, we have to move this plus 12 over to the other side. So if we want to move it over to the other side, we have to do the inverse operation of adding. So the opposite of adding would be subtracting. So my one step is to subtract 12 from both sides of my equal sign. And again, you have to show this step. You have to show me that you are subtracting 12 on both sides of the equal sign. You cannot show me subtracting 12 on one side because that is not proper algebraic steps. You have to think of like a scale. So if you take 12 away from one side of the scale, you don't have an even scale anymore. So to get it back even, if you take 12 over here, you also have to take 12 over here as well, okay? After this, your plus 12 minus 12 gives you zero, so those just cancel. You bring down whatever you have left, so in this case we're just left with m, and then you solve this side over here. So 10 minus 12 gives us negative 2. So your answer here is m equals negative 2. Okay, there is a way for you to check your work to see if you got this answer correct. You can always plug your answer back in for the variable because if they said that m equals negative 2, plug negative 2 back in for m and see if this equation works out. So if you were to take negative 2 plus 12, does that give you a positive 10? It does, so you know that you did this correctly, okay? All right, so let's move on to the next one. So I like to draw a line right where my equal sign is just to help you guys remember that whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So this line kind of like creates a wall. So you just make sure that you're doing steps on both sides. So you always want to look at the side that the variable is on. So if you see here, the variable is on the right side now. So whatever side the variable is on, you need to move everything else that's on that same side of the variable over to the other side. So in this case, we need to move this minus 9, okay, so that we can get g by itself. So to get rid of that minus 9, you have to do the inverse operation of subtracting. So the opposite of subtracting is adding. So what you would do is you would add 9, once again, to both sides of the equal sign. <clears throat> there is no other way to do this, so please, please, please make sure that you guys are writing down the proper algebraic steps just like I am, okay? So <clears throat> your minus 9 plus 9 will cancel because that equals 0. You just bring down whatever you have left. So in this case, we're just left with G on the right side. You want to keep it on the right side. And then over here, you're just going to take negative 2 plus 9. And negative 2 plus 9 gives you a positive 7. <clears throat> okay. All right, moving on to number 3. 
So now notice how our variable is back on the left side. So here's my wall, here's my equal sign. Our variable is back on the left side, but we, st <coughs> excuse me, we still need to move the number that's on the same side as y. In this case, we need to move the negative seven. However, what operation is happening right now with this negative seven and y when they're shoved up next to each other? It means that they are multiplying. So what would be the inverse operation of multiplying to get rid of that negative seven? What's the opposite of multiplying? If you said dividing, that is correct. So to show division, you are not using division signs anymore. You are going to be using fraction signs. So the fraction sign, remember, is just the little uh, horizontal line going uh, left to right and you're just going to show that you are dividing negative seven on both sides of that equal sign. Again, make sure your notes look exactly like mine because there's no other way to do this, okay? So your negative sevens will cancel because negative seven divided by negative seven is one. So all that we're gonna be left with is y, which is what we wanted. And then if we were to take negative 91 divided by negative 7, we are allowed to use calculators now. So negative 1 divided by negative 7 gives us a positive 13. So our answer is y equals 13. And again, to check to see if you got the right answer, you can always plug your answer back in for the variable and just multiply this to see if you do get the negative 91. So if you were to take negative seven times that positive 13, notice how we do get negative 91, so we know that we did this problem correctly. All right, moving on to number four. So number four, notice how we have a divided by nine equals negative four. Again, our end goal is to get the very Again, our end goal is to get the variable by itself, so we need to move all other numbers that's on the same side as the variable. So in this case, we need to move this nine. And again, you have to do the inverse operation of whatever it's doing. So if you see here, you guys see the fraction bar. And what fraction bar is, is the division sign, right? So if I wanna get rid of the nine, I have to do the opposite of dividing by nine. So the opposite of dividing by nine is multiplying by nine, right? So you would just show me that you are multiplying by nine on both sides. Again, make sure you're doing it on both sides. You have to show me the number and you have to show me the operation on both sides. Notice how I showed you adding nine, subtracting nine, dividing by nine. So you have to show both the operation and the number and then you're just gonna solve it. So these nines will cancel because uh, dividing nine times nine is just one. So then you're just gonna be left with A equals, and then negative four times nine would give us negative 36. And again, go back and check to see if that works. So if you were to take negative 36 divided by nine, do you get negative four? We sure do, so we know that we did it correctly. Okay, so again, main thing to know is your goal is to get the variable by itself even if it's on the right side you're still trying to get the variable by itself you have to move every other number that's on the same side of that variable over to the other side by using the inverse operations so if you are adding the inverse operation would be subtracting if you were subtracting the inverse operation would be adding and then same thing with multiplying and dividing. If you were multiplying, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. And if you were dividing, the opposite of dividing is multiplying, okay? After you do that, you just have to make sure you're showing your proper algebraic steps and getting your correct answer, okay? Um, so I'm going to harsh on you guys that you need to show the proper algebraic steps. If you are not showing these steps, just like how it's on my paper, you are not going to do well on this quiz or test, okay? Um, so I know that you guys are probably like, man, she's gonna make us do all this. Guys, I'm just trying to get you guys prepared for algebra. 
because they're going to make sure that you do it in this way as well. Um, so you guys just need to get in a habit of doing it now, doing it correctly so that when you guys get to algebra next year, you guys are well prepared. Okay. All right, so what if we have fractional coefficients? So again, we're still trying to get our variable by itself, but now instead of just a number that we need to get rid of, we have a fraction that we need to get rid of. So to get rid of a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. And if you guys remember, reciprocal means if you have like four fifths, the reciprocal of four fifths is just five over four. So you just flip flop their numbers, okay? So here, we're trying to get x by itself, so we need to get rid of the two thirds. Again, to get rid of a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of two over three is three over two. So when you multiply a number times its reciprocal, they cancel out because it gives you one. So you are just going to be left with x equals, and then if we were to take 10 times three over two, oh, that's not right. There we go, we get 15. Okay, so x equals 15 here. <clears throat> All right, so let's try the next one. So again, we need to get the variable by itself. So we need to get rid of everything else that's on the same side of the variable. And we see a fraction. So to get rid of that fractional coefficient, you just multiply by its reciprocal on both sides. So your four ninths cancel because that equals one. And you're just gonna be left with negative eight times nine over four and you would get negative 18. <coughs> Again, notice how I am showing my steps on both sides still, and I'm still showing you guys that I am multiplying these, okay? All right, so same thing here for number seven. If you have a fractional coefficient, you need to get rid of that fraction by multiplying it by its reciprocal. Notice how there is a negative sign in front of the fraction. So when you multiply by the reciprocal, you want to keep the negative sign in its reciprocal. Okay, so the reciprocal of negative 6 over 5 would be negative 5 over 6. And again, you want to do that to both sides of the equal sign. Okay. So your negative 6 over 5 will um, cancel out here because that would just equal 1. You're going to be left with k equals and then 12 times a negative 5, 6 is just negative 10. All right, and last one here. <clears throat> so same thing. Trying to get m by itself, we have a fractional coefficient that we need to get rid of. So to get rid of that fractional coefficient, you multiply by its reciprocal on both sides. So in this case, the reciprocal of negative one over two would be negative two over one. Or in other words, this is just multiplying by negative two, okay? So your fraction and its reciprocal will cancel because that equals one. You're gonna be left with m equals and then negative nine times negative two gives us a positive eight. times negative two gives us a positive 18. All right, so these are what we call one step equations because do you guys see how we only did one step to get our final answer? So that's why those are called one step. We also have something that are called two step equations. So instead of doing one step, we now are gonna have two steps in order to solve these equations. And here's how you solve a two step equation. So once again, you're always trying to get the variable by itself. So wherever the variable is, you need to move all other numbers on that same side of the variable over to the other side of the equal sign, okay? So to do that, 
The first step is to undo the addition or subtraction. So you are always going to be removing the constant term. So this is going to be the number that does not have the variable attached to it. After you undo the addition or subtraction, you then can undo the multiplication or division. So that would be your coefficient number that is attached to the variable. Okay, so your constant is not attached to variable. The coefficient is attached to variable. Okay, so you always want to move the number that's on the same side of the variable, but it's not attached to the variable, so that's your constant. And that would either be an addition or subtraction step. Then you can remove the coefficient that is attached to the variable, and you would either be multiplying or dividing. Okay, so look at number nine. So once again, I like to draw my wall so that you guys can remember that we have to show steps on both sides of the equal sign here. So our first step is to undo the addition or subtraction. So this is our constant term. So you always want to look on the side that has the variable. So in this case, it's the left side. And you want to move the constant. So you want the number that's on the same side as x but not attached to it. So in this case, the first step that we need to remove is adding the 8. Okay? Because again, this is the undo the addition or subtraction. So right now it's adding. And it's also the constant. It's the number on the same side as x, but not attached to it. So just like we did up here with one-step equations, you have to do the inverse of adding 8. So the opposite of adding 8 is subtracting 8. So you need to show that you're going to be subtracting 8 on both sides of that equal sign. So let's do that. So your plus 8 minus 8 will cancel because that equals 0. You have to bring down everything else that's left. So after you cancel out the 8s, you still have 6x left that you have to deal with. So on the left side of the wall, on the equal sign, you're going to have 6x equals, and then 50 minus 8 is going to give us 42. Now notice how the variable is still not by itself. So that's why this is called a two-step equation because we just did our first step and now we're going to have to do another, another step to get x by itself. So this is when we have to undo the multiplication or division. So we have to remove the number that's attached to the variable. So in this case, the number attached to the variable is 6. So we have to remove that. So this goes back to our one-step equation. What, is, what operation is happening right now with the 6 and the x when they're shoved up next to each other? They are multiplying. So if I need to get rid of that 6 and move it to the other side, I have to do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. So I would divide by 6, divide by 6. So my answer here would be x equals, and 42 divided by 6 gives me 7. And that is how you solve a two-step equation. So if you notice, after you do your first step, you then just have a one-step equation like we did at the top of our notes here. And then you just do another step to get your answer. And as always, you can always plug your answer back into the variable and solve this equation to see if it works out. So if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were to take 7 and plug it in for x, you now have 6 times 7, which is 42. And then 42 plus 8 does give you 50, so you know you did it correctly. Okay, <clears throat> so let's try the next one. So same thing, you are trying to get the variable by itself, so you are going to have to move every number on the same side of the variable over to the other side. And the first number that you want to move is the number that's adding or subtracting. Or in other words, it's going to be the constant, so it's not going to be attached to the variable. So in this case, the number that we need to move here is the minus 5 first. Okay? So to move it, you have to do the opposite of subtracting. So what's the opposite of subtracting? It is adding. So your minus 5 plus 5 will cancel. You're just going to be left with this 2n equals 
and then your 11 plus 5 would give you 16. <coughs> All right. Now your second step is to undo the multiplication or division. So you have to remove the coefficient. So in this case, we need to remove the 2 to get n by itself. And once again, the 2 and the n are multiplying. So the opposite of multiplying would be dividing. So remember to show division, you're using that fraction bar. And you're going to be left with n equals, and 16 divided by 2 gives us 8. All right, so let's try a couple more here. So I like to, again, draw a line where my equal sign is so I can tell where both of my sides are going to be at. You always want to look on the side that the variable is on. So notice how the variable is on the right side now. And the first thing that we need to undo is the addition or subtract subtraction, so the constant. So the number that's not attached to our variable here is the 9. So the opposite of adding 9 to move it over to the other side is subtracting 9. And then you just solve this. So 13 minus 9 is 4. Notice how your plus 9 minus 9 over here will cancel. So you're just going to be left with that negative 4k. So you just have to bring it down. And then our last step that we have to do to get k by itself is move this negative 4 over to the other side. So again, the negative 4 and the k are multiplying. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. And then over here, we're just going to be left with k. So our answer is negative 1 equals k. <clears throat> All right, and the last one. So the number that we need to move first, again, is the number not attached to the variable, but it's on the same side as the variable. So in this case, we need to remove the 7. So notice how there's no operation before the 7, but since this 7 is positive, you can kind of think of this as like an adding 7 since it is positive. So what would be the opposite of adding 7? Subtracting 7. <clears throat> so your plus 7 minus 7 will cancel. Now please be careful about this. I told you guys in class that you need to start realizing that minus signs are negative signs because if you were to bring down just the 3y, that is not correct because notice how there was this minus sign in front of the 3y here. So this 3y is actually a negative 3y. So when you bring down the 3y, you also have to bring down that subtraction sign to indicate that this 3y is a negative. So just make sure that whatever is left after you cancel out something, you have to bring down that whole thing, okay? So that is one of the main mistakes that students make all the time. So that's why I'm trying to stress to you guys that minus signs are really just negative signs, okay? And then over here, when you take 34 minus 7, you get positive 27. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to do is uh, divide by this negative 3 on both sides to get y by itself. So we get y equals negative 9. So again, guys, I cannot stress enough to you how your steps should look exactly like mine okay so if you are if you're writing your notes down and you don't have the plus five plus five you just have five five that's not correct if you're taking your notes and you just wrote five on one side and not five on the other side that is not correct okay i am trying to help you guys please 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 make sure that your guys's notes look exactly like mine okay if you don't want to draw the line down the middle for the equal sign, that's totally fine. The thing that I'm most concerned about is are you showing steps on both sides with the operation? Are you showing the result that you get after showing your steps? Show your steps again 
And then are you writing down the answer in the correct way? So X was on the left side of the equal sign, so left stays on the left side. And then your number answer will be on the right. Okay? So I'm just going to do a couple more. <clears throat> so on the back side here, uh, we still have some two-step equations. So for this one, once again, you always want to move the number on the same side as X, but not attached to it, and it's going to be adding or subtracting. So in this case, we want to move the minus 7 first. So the opposite of subtracting 7 is adding 7. So your 7s will cancel. You're going to be left with x over 2 equals, and then 9 plus 7 is 16. And then now notice how if we're trying to get x by itself, we have to move this 2. Remember, if the x and the 2 are dividing, are dividing because there's that fraction bar, the opposite of dividing by 2 would be to multiply by 2. So after you do that, your 2's will cancel. You're going to be left with x equals, and then 16 times 2 gives us a positive 32. All right, so let me do uh, this one now with you since we have a fractional coefficient. So same thing, always move the number on the same side as x but not attached to it. So here we see that the 22 is the constant and it's adding. So if I want to move that 22, the opposite of adding 22 is subtracting 22. So your plus 22 minus 22 will cancel. Again, you have to bring down everything that's left. So we still have the 3 fifths x give us 6. And then now we just have a one-step equation with a fractional coefficient. Remember, to get rid of that fractional coefficient, all that you have to do is just multiply by its reciprocal on both sides. So then you are going to be left with x equals 10. Okay. <clears throat> All right, um, I am going to skip these ones uh, because I may have my students do these ones for homework tonight. Um, so just make sure you guys check my Canvas page or check your teacher's Canvas page for what the homework is. Um, so I'm going to skip those four. And I do just want to do one of these examples. Um, so you guys may see a problem that looks like this, which is totally different than what um, we have been doing. Um, so in these examples, uh, they are different in that the multiplication and division must be done first and then followed by the addition or subtraction. And the reason why this is is because they start us out with a fraction. So we want to get rid of that fraction by multiplying by the denominator on both sides. So in this case, uh, to get rid of this dividing by 8, you can just do the inverse of dividing, which is multiplying. So that then your 8s can cancel, and you're just going to be left with x plus 11 equals, and then negative 3 times 8 is just negative 24. Okay, so that's why we do that. Um, so if you see a problem like this, just make sure that you have to get rid of that dividing by 8 first by doing the inverse of dividing, which is multiplying, and then you're just going to be left with the numerator equals whatever this is. Okay. And then after that, you just have a one-step equation. So again, to get x by itself, you do the inverse operation of this adding 11, which is subtracting 11. And then you're just going to be left with x equals negative 35. <clears throat> OK. So let me just do one more to help you here. So again, if you see a fraction to start out with with your variable involved with the fraction, Always try to get rid of that denominator by multiplying by its denominator to get rid of it. And remember, if it's a negative, make sure that you pull that negative with it. 
so that then your denominator will cancel out and you're just going to be left with n minus 5 equals and then negative 7 times negative 2 is a positive 14. And then you just go back to your one step equation process. So you would just add by 5 and then you would get n equals 19. Okay. All right, so that is the basics on one and two step equations. Again, make sure that you guys are showing your proper algebraic steps. You're showing the operation on both sides of the equal sign. You are showing the number that you are adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing on both sides of the equal sign. And then you are showing the step result, step answer um, uh, process because that is the proper algebraic way to solve equations, okay? Um, so please let me know if you have any questions or let your teacher know if you guys have any questions. Um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.